I'm Stephen, the art director on Peaky Blinders The King's Ransom, where I oversee all the art production for the game, from characters to environments and animation. Within the game, we've got some of the most iconic environments from the TV show, from the Garrison Pub to Garrison Lane and Charlie's Yard as well. The way we went about recreating all the environments from the show was to work closely with the TV show, but also with behind the scenes. So we made sure that the sets matched our sets in the game and that locations had the same atmosphere and feeling that the TV show had. Really important to, particularly from an art side, that we were authentic towards what we were trying to recreate. But the one thing we did want to do was make sure that everything was believable for the people playing the game, that you actually felt like you were in the, the Garrison pub and that you actually were meeting Tommy and Arthur. We were conscious to make sure that it looked and felt like the TV show as much as we possibly could, whilst also still giving the gaming values that people want when they're playing a game. All stand secure the barge. Go and find the contact to say what they know. So one of the things that we brought into the game was we wanted to add something more than was just normal Peaky Blinders. Working really closely with the narrative writers, we created new factions and new characters to bring into our game. That starts from a narrative idea of what that character is going to be, how they're going to look like, what they're going to move, how they're going to speak, but also to fit in around the story and have those as part of the world that the player is playing in. So the process that we go through to recreate a character from the TV show, for example, with Killian Murphy, is again lots of reference, but also making sure that he plays a character. So trying to bring him as Tommy to life rather than him as Killian to life, including everything from the clothing that he wears so it fits in with the show and fits in with what we want in the game, but also to the way he looks and he moves. I'll try, my boy. Paul Anderson, who plays Arthur, we had him in a motion capture studio. He had the full suit on and we captured him doing his lines, doing his mannerisms. And you really get that completely in the game. When you meet him, it is very much Arthur in your face. And those are all directed like a TV show, right? So you, you have a fake set that the characters act and move around with him and then you capture that data. There are some moments in the game that are just phenomenal for me, that just genuinely really make you realize what VR can actually do. There's something really immersive about that that no other medium gets across. It looks phenomenal, but also it plays really well. And then you put that with the music and everything else in the story, yeah, you've got a triple A VR game there, <laughs> which is true. I'm Richard Wilkinson, and I am the composer on Peaky Blinders The King's Ransom. Inspirations an interesting one with something like Peaky Blinders because it's such a iconic culture, I suppose, because it's such a big show and it, it's resonated so broadly throughout the world. We've got a lot of different locations in the game and we wanted to give each of those places a particular feel. So when you are around Garrison Lane, there's a bit more going on in terms of guitars and a bit more of that Peaky Swagger sound. The documents in that red box. I'm every British undercover agent worldwide. Whoever's got it could blow the lid off the empire. And there's a whole new area that we've introduced of uh, Limehouse, which is kind of the Chinatown of that region. You've got to be a bit more serious about the research and how does Chinese music sound and how should you integrate it. When you watch the show Peaky Blinders, you're pretty much always looking at it from the viewpoint of the Shelbys because it's their story and it's their family and it's their business. But with Peaky Blinders The King's Ransom, you're, you're taking the journey of somebody else, of, of our character Sammy, the protagonist, who isn't necessarily part of that world or isn't as part of that world as the characters we follow in the TV show. So the music reflects that in the sense that it doesn't quite initially have the swagger and the confidence of the Shelbys, but it, it has a little more uncertainty. So the music sort of reflects the narrative journey that we go on as, as Sammy, but it also technically has to do different things to the show.